How's it going, everybody? I'm back in the workshop here. There is a new challenge on. Who can make the best medieval chapel? It's gonna be me. So I've gotta figure out first, what kind of a chapel am I gonna make? As far as materials go, it's gonna be very similar to the medieval farmhouse that I did before this one. So definitely gonna be using the dollar store foam where you just peel off the paper and use the foam underneath. Those will be the walls and uh, the roof and all kinds of different things. I usually end up using this, this foam for things like shingles on the roof, uh, maybe the top of the, the church, the steeple. I might use the sticker foam for that. So definitely gonna be using this foam. Uh, and then I think for the little crosses and things that are little details that are gonna be on, the, uh, on this church, I'll have some uh, air dry polyform clay. Uh, and this is just the white polyform clay, air dry. So definitely gonna use those. I have a few other things floating on my mind that may or may not be considered cheating, so. We'll see about that. I've got a lot of work to do. This is a big build, so let's get started. So I'm gonna try a new technique on texturing this before I put my brick pattern in here. I've got one piece done already here, and I went over this with aluminum foil. And it looks pretty good, but um, I've seen this done before, and I'm gonna give it a try and see if I can get it to work. Basically, I have a soldering iron, if you can see that and it's got a fairly large tip on it, so I've been able to put like five or six inches worth of, uh, of tin foil on here. And it's plugged in, it's hot, so I'm just gonna go over and make some texture on this, and it's pretty hot, so it's gonna, it's gonna melt the foam really quickly. Now that I've put the pavement texture on the, uh, on the foam, I'm gonna use my 3D printed stamps. This one I like, it's called crazier paving and uh, this is basically a stamp and it's it's made so that you can meet the edges together so if you just do this in a in a row it's gonna match up the pattern what I like to do at this point is cut a base piece that will go on the inside or the bottom of this uh, chapel now you can go ahead and remove the paper from the back side of the foam and what's going to happen is this will straighten up the piece as they tend to warp a little bit until the paper is off. Now I'm going to glue my side pieces on and the front and back of the chapel. I decided to glue two braces in here because it was warping pretty good and I just want this to be strong enough because I'm going to be putting a lot of stuff on the outside of this and I want to make sure it's strong enough. So just two, two braces in here and that should be enough to keep the building strong enough. Of course, as anticipated, um, I usually see these things ahead of time, but not only did I need this, the uh, braces in here, I need them for the roof as well because these things are not perfectly straight and they're just gonna be sort of flimsy if I don't have uh, some additional braces in here. So I cut these out, I'm just gonna hot glue them on there. Okay, that'll give it some added strength here when I put this on and it's gonna work out much better. All right, I've got my basic chapel design here in place. The basic structures, uh, done and it feels pretty strong and uh, so let's go ahead and move on to the next step. Uh, so what I'm trying to do is, is get this edge detail here, this trim, three different layers of it. So what I found is, is if I just trace these out onto the wood material, I can cut out three different sizes and glue them together and that actually will give me that molding edge detail. So uh, go ahead and cut out a template like this, glue all three pieces together and then we'll go to the next step. So I'm just going to start by rolling out some Sculpey, just enough to go all the way around the window frame. To do this, I'm going to wrap my Sculpey clay around the wood template and just roll the Sculpey over the template. Then I'm just going to trim off the excess clay around the template, trim off all the edges. Okay, so I've got that cut out. Now I'm going to go ahead and peel out carefully. You actually, you could grease this piece of wood up first, it would not be a bad idea. Okay, so it's a little bit rough in there, but we're gonna go and clean that up later. I'm making the inside part of my window right here, so I just need to roll out some more Sculpey, and about a little more than a sixteenth of an inch thick, 
is where I want it, then I can go ahead and cut out the piece that I want to use. And so now we're going to cut that detail out here. I'm just going to freehand it so, you know, just do your best. It doesn't have to be perfect because you can sort of manipulate this later on. But I'm going to go with a little different style here because I want a couple of different windows. And I'm going to take and put it on my baking sheet. I'm making a couple of these, so uh, I just want to have a bunch of different things to choose from. Next on the project is going to be this entrance to the chapel. Basically is going to be a couple of wooden doors, medieval doors with a uh, stone entryway. Now it's time to start on the roof tiles and I've got an interesting template that I like to use for making these. I basically just cut out a block of the XPS foam and then I'm going to use my soldering iron wrapped with tin foil to put the texture of the wood tiles onto the end of the strips. Then just run it through your hot wire cutter at about an eighth of an inch. And then I'm gonna use my 3D printed wood grain roller to finish off the texture on these wood tile strips. And it's a good idea to go over it twice. It gives you a much better wood grain. Now I'm gonna glue a little starter piece at the bottom of the roof here before I layer all of the rest of the strips on top of that. Then I'm gonna start hot gluing my strips of roof tiles, one on top of the other until I reach the top of the roof. Next, using an eighth inch piece of XPS foam, I'm gonna cut out these square pieces with an angle on it, which will later become part of the roof and painted to look like granite slabs. This next feature I thought would be really interesting. I actually picked this up from one of the online images and it just gave a great detail uh, to a, one of the chapels. So I decided to incorporate this into my build. It is a bit tricky cutting out the detail parts here, but just make sure you have a sharp blade so you can avoid ripping the foam while you cut these detail pieces. And once I've got all the pieces cut out, I'm ready to use my dry stone roller, which gives a really cool pattern, which should contrast the granite slabs that are gonna be on the main building. Once the texture's in, all you need to do is put a layer of Mod Podge on and paint it tan. I've got my three strips of molding pieces cut here, so all I'm going to do is just glue them together, and then eventually I'll paint them to look like this. So just take all three strips, glue them together, and it should look like this. Next we're going to focus in on this detail. It is the top of the church, or the steeple. Here's the rough shape of it, and uh, it's going to go somewhere up here. Meanwhile, on the other side of the chapel roof, I'm going to put these one quarter inch strips of XPS foam on the roof. I found these column details on this image so interesting that I had to have them on my chapel. So it took a while to get these cut out and detailed, but I think it's worth it in the end. So we're going to have one on each corner and then we're going to have two more along the sides. So to do this you're going to need to cut three quarter inch strips of XPS foam. You'll need seven of them and then you're going to need to do the detail on each of these. So it's a little tricky cutting the angles out but use your cutting mat uh, to get the angles right and you should be able to get these cut out evenly. Next, I'm gonna use my crazier paving stamp again to put the texture on these pillars. So just go ahead and give them an imprint and we're gonna go over these with an X-Acto knife and a pen. So this will take some time to do, but the detail will pay off in the end. Next, I need to cut the granite tiles, I guess you can call them, for the tops of these pillars. You can use hot glue or PVA glue. Either one is fine. I'm waiting for my glue gun to warm up, so I'll just use PVA glue. Once I've made all the pillars, I'm gonna go ahead and give them a coat of Mod Podge and black paint. 
I made my original chapel windows out of Sculpey, but I decided to cast them as I wanted to use them for future builds. I will include a link for you in my description on how to do that. Next, we're just going to finish off the granite slab detail on the other side of the chapel roof. I'm also ready to fit my precast window onto my steeple piece. So while I'm waiting to do that, I'm going to go ahead and texture this with my soldering iron and tinfoil technique. Then after I cut the hole out for the window, I'm going to go ahead and finish this with a coat of Mod Podge. And you can see that I've already put the granite tiles on there. Next, we're going to take our molding detail and we're going to use this to cover up all the rough edges on the sides of the chapel roof. After I get all the angles cut, I'm going to go ahead and use my hot glue gun to attach these to the roof and you'll see that this hides all of that detail there so it works out really nice. The next step is to go ahead and put a coat of Mod Podge and black paint over the whole structure. I did a little experimenting with my paint schemes. So um, in order to come out with the colors that I want to end up with, I had to do some experimenting and basically what I did is... Uh, uh, let's see, I did a tan, I did a granite gray, and a pewter gray. That's uh, right here, tan, pewter gray, and granite gray. And then I had different washes that I tried on here, but I think the one I like the best is gonna be this pewter gray and the tan, which are gonna be contrasting colors on the final piece. So we're gonna go with pewter gray, and we're gonna give a full coverage on this. We're not going to try and light brush it at all. We just wanna get a full coat. After you finish the pillars, go ahead and paint the same pewter gray over the entire structure except for the roof. Now I'm ready for my contrasting paint scheme. And this is for the sort of sandstone work that's gonna go on the front of the chapel here. So again, this is what we're going to have granite on the outside and we're going to go with this uh, sandstone look for the contrasting piece here. So the next step on these sandstone features is to do a very light dry brushing of white. I went ahead and painted the uh, granite stone on either side of the house here because that actually is going to be the same color as the sides here. It's all kind of a granite look. So that's done. How cool would it be to have stained glass windows? That would be really cool, but I was thinking, how would you do that? How would you go about doing that? And my brother, who is building the same project here, or a different version of it, suggested the old childhood shrinky dinks. Do you remember these? It's a full size sheet and you color in a design, you put it in the oven and it shrinks down to like a third and it looks like glass. So I thought, well, if I can figure out the size right on this thing, I'll make a stained glass window, shrink it down and put it in here and that would look really cool. So I'm gonna give that a try. I'm either wasting my time or this is gonna be totally worth it. So we'll see what happens. So this one is done. I'm gonna throw this in the toaster oven and I'm actually gonna film that if you don't remember how this stuff works. It's really cool to see how much it shrinks in the oven. So I'm gonna film that for you so you can see it. Who would have thought I would be using Shrinky Dinks in one of my builds? But I have actually successfully made one stained glass window already. And it turned out great. So it's gonna pop right in there. My window frame's gonna go on top of it. And uh, I think that looks pretty damn cool. I decided to change the paint scheme of this chapel piece that goes on top here. Uh, just to give it some contrast, I thought the sandstone with the granite would be uh, really cool looking. Next, we're going to dry brush all the granite parts of the building with white paint. And you need to be really careful not to use too much paint here. You can put it on, but you can't take it off. I had to get all these base coats down first. We got the uh, burnt umber on the roof. Then we put the golden brown on top of that. Then we're gonna do a final white brush over the golden brown, which should give us a nice texture on that and just highlight the uh, all the shingles. I 
actually hate this part because you think you're screwing up, but in the end it usually works out just fine. You get little what look like globs of paint or gatherings of paint in one area. After the dry brushing is done, we're ready to go ahead and do our black wash and brown wash. We're going to start with the black wash on all of the slate stone parts of the building, which include the moldings, the sides, and the pillars around the chapel. Mm -hmm. I'm also going to black wash the sandstone features on the chapel because the contrast will still be there. I've decided to change the paint scheme on these windows because I just realized that the sandstone needs to be the contrasting color on the final structure. So I'm going to go back and paint these with a tan base to give them a sandstone look. Next I'm ready to go ahead and hot glue gun the sandstone feature to the sides of the chapel. And I've decided to add a really cool little detail feature here by putting these little miniature crosses in each of the archways on the sandstone piece. Gives it a really nice look. Next I'm ready to go ahead and glue all of my pillar features on the corners and the sides of the chapel. I decided to use one of my precast doors in a little archway that I made out of Dollar Tree foam, but you can just use Sculpey to create a door. Next, I'm ready to go ahead and hot glue my windows on both sides of the building and also the main windows which are going to have the stained glass. I'm blackwashing my windows and my steeple now and those are going to get attached to the building next. Alright, so after making a big mess, <clears throat> I tried doing the shrinky dinks, the shrinky dink windows and I just wasn't having that much luck. I mean, it kind of looked cool. But I made a huge mistake when I sprayed it with this polyurethane clear gloss. It just made the paint run and the ink run and it looks terrible. I just kind of messed it up. So I'm actually fortunate enough to have a mom who does stained glass or who used to do stained glass. So I have all these really cool colored pieces of glass and a glass cutter and a grinding table. So. You can just go ahead with this. If you do it right, the Shrinky Dinks will, will absolutely work. So um, I would not discourage you from doing this, but I am going to do it this way because I messed up my Shrinky Dinks so many times that uh, I'm just gonna glue a piece of glass in here and I think that will look cool. If you look on the other side here, I've actually got a piece already in there and it looks cool. So I'm gonna go with that. Actually gluing the glass pieces into the structure was the tricky part. Uh, once the glue was in there, I had to kind of turn it upside down and get the glass to sit in there without falling through. So just be patient here. Oh, whew, gosh. That's really stressful cutting a hole into the side of your completed building, but it is necessary. That was a little nerve wracking, but I got it on. It looks good and I'm happy with it. it looks really good. Okay, so now I just gotta do my other windows. I have three small ones on this side and then one bigger one on this side and, and we are done. Here's one of the side windows. All I have to do now is the part I hate the most, cut the hole in the building and glue the glass in there. So we'll do these one at a time until we get all three of these on this side. Again, gluing these pieces of glass into the structure is tricky and what you don't want to happen is for the glass to fall through. All right, got the windows in. They look really good. So, here's window number one. The three windows on this side. I just put the other big one on the back side. And then this one on the front. I did manage to get one good shrinky dink, so I decided to use that in my steeple window. I decided to add one small feature to the front of the chapel, which is basically a Sculpey cross and a piece of XPS foam that I painted up. I also decided to go back over the window sills with the brown wash so it would contrast the rest of the building. I also brown washed the big stained glass windows and all of the little miniature crosses on both sides of the chapel. The last thing I had to do was just black wash the slate pieces on the roof and this piece is done. Thanks for watching guys. I hope you enjoyed my version of this medieval chapel build. It was actually a lot of fun to do this. It was a lot of work. Uh, it was a big build, but I think it turned out really cool. I'm really happy with the results. 
Uh, so if you haven't already done it, please subscribe to our channel, uh, like us. And uh, also I wanted to remind you that if you were interested in casting any of the doors and windows that I did in this build, I put a link to uh, Black Magic Crafts video on how to cast doors and windows if you want to check that out. Other than that, that's it. We'll see you next week.